today I have a very exciting video. And it's not a video of something inside my own garden. It is someone else's garden that needed some help and with such a beautiful specimen, I just couldn't turn down the offer. When it comes to growing citrus trees, I don't think there's much that can beat the prowess of a fully mature lemon tree or citrus tree like the one right behind me. However, they do need quite a bit of care and attention. So what I want to do today is I want to chat to you about how we can nurse a neglected citrus tree or lemon tree back to health once it has been neglected to the point that it's actually busy suffering. Especially in the middle of summer where we have a lot of heat, a lot of dryness. There's some things we need to do to make sure that we get the foundations right, we bring the tree back to the health it needs to ultimately give us the amazing fruits that we are after when growing citrus trees. So as I stand inside this beautiful fig tree, I want to take you through my initial assessment of it. Why I came to the conclusions I did, and then once I have gone through my initial assessment with you, go into a little bit more detail on each of them, and what we're gonna to do to bring this tree back to health. So first of all, one of the biggest signs that this tree is in trouble is all the leaves are curling inwards. And I've been here a few days on and off to check and it's not a matter of opening and closing. They are consistently closed, which means this tree is beyond thirsty. So the first thing we need to do is we need to treat the curling leaves, which impact photosynthesis and the overall health, by looking at the bottom. The soil is pretty much sand, which is actually perfectly fine. Citrus love free draining sandy soils but they don't want to be dry. They are not desert plants, they are not cactuses. So they actually need quite a bit of water, but they do like getting dry spells in between, which means this tree needs a good, good soak. Then what we find is there are a lot of pests and diseases on this tree. I just, from an initial inspection, can see aphids, mealybugs, and then some of the fruit has already been stung by the false coddling moth. So we need to put some measures in place to initially treat that and then put in some preventative measures to make sure that we give the tree some protection once it's busy building up some strength and immunity. Then what we're looking at is some fruit. This tree is still producing some fruit, but what you don't want is when a tree is in a state like this and it is under a lot of stress, sending out stress signals, bringing in pests, for it to stall, we're trying to put into energy into ripening fruit that it really shouldn't be doing. And then the next thing is, if we take a look inside and even some of the outside branches, there are a lot of dead branches and a lot of diseased branches. And quite often, either of those two can lead to further dieback of branches if they are not taken care of. So those are the four things that I've identified that we need to look at, which we're going to look into more detail right now. The very first thing we're going to focus on is rehydrating the soil and giving this tree lots of water just so that it can rehydrate itself and build up some strength and immunity. What we want to do when we're looking at rehydrating, especially a more mature tree like this, is we want to establish where the drip line is. Now, a drip line is basically the outermost portion of the tree, which if you think of if it were to rain, the drops would catch on the leaves and they would start dripping down on the outermost part of you know, where the leaves are. And this is where most of the feeder roots are, the fine roots that absorb a lot of moisture and a lot of nutrients. Why we want to do that is we don't just want to water around the base of the tree because we know the feeder roots are out here. So we want to take any kind of pole or stick and we want to just make an, a rough outline of where the drip line is. And then once we have determined where the drip line is, what we need to do is create a basin. We don't need to dig into the soil because we might expose some of the roots. You can if you want to, but it's not necessary. A better option would be to actually take some of the soil or sand around the edges, bring it in to make a, a, an edge, and basically we're gonna create a dam. 
And then what we're going to do is switch on the water, put a hose pipe in there and let this dam fill up. Let it soak in. We're going to fill it up, let it soak. And over the next 24 hours, we are going to keep rehydrating this dam up, down, up, down, up, down until it is completely soaked through into the roots. And then what we can do is once we've done this for 24 hours, constantly topping it up and letting it soak in, we'll then do the same thing once a week. We don't want to overdo it because like I said, citrus trees do like to dry out in between their waterings, but they don't want to go bone dry. They want to stay moist, but not wet. It's a fine line, especially with sandy soil. So if you do a deep drench once a week, once you've done a very aggressive rehydration, the tree is going to absolutely love you for it. Just a note on that though, if you have clay soil, if you have very loamy, dense compost-like soil, you might need to adjust this water, the watering schedule because you don't want to kill the tree by drowning it. As the saying goes, you don't want to kill your tree with kindness. And exactly the same thing applies here. So I know this area, sandy soil, it's going to drain. Clay soil, you might not want to soak it for 24 hours and might not want to soak it once every week, but actually space that out because the clay soil would hold onto moisture significantly longer. So we're going to build a little dam, fill it up, and then we're going to come back to the next one. So as the basin of this tree that we've just created continues to fill up, let's look at the next thing, which is pest control. Like I mentioned, this tree that I have already identified, I have seen some stings on the fruit from false codling moth, which is an issue because the fruit will fall and from there the larva will overwinter in the soil, they'll climb up the base, turn into moths and continue the cycle. It's a pretty vicious cycle. So we want to get rid of those fruits and treat them as well. But what we have is aphids. We can see a lot of ants. Where you see ants, you tend to have aphids because they live symbiotically. What we also have is mealybug. The mealybug is more on the inside. And if you look inside the tree, and I'll show you, there's also some elements of sooty mold, black sooty mold, which you'll always find on trees that are overgrown, specifically citrus trees that haven't been pruned, where there's not a good airflow and good sunlight. Black sooty mold is kind of something you'd always get. It's where the leaves get all black and moldy that you can just rub off. So the two ways we're going to treat the tree is contact-based and preventative. Contact-based, we're going to be using neem oil just as an initial treatment. I don't like using neem oil because it kills everything that feeds the predators on the tree. But as an initial treatment, it's just something we have to do to bring the tree and the infections under control. And then from there on out, we won't need to spray because we'll have some preventative measures in place. So now we're starting to get into a little bit of the guts of the tree, which is super exciting. The next thing we want to do is preventative pest treatment or preventative control. What we want to do is look for any form of container. This is an old protein shake, jar, bottle, container, whatever. Cut the two sides off, cut it down the middle. What we will do, I'm not going to do it now because the tree is soaking. Once it's finished soaking, I'll do this. We'll put this around the base of the tree. We'll then get some tape, tape this closed. And then the magic ingredient is we'll fill the inside just about a centimeter all the way on the surface area at the bottom of the ground will cover with diatomaceous earth. What this is going to do is first of all the surface area is quite slippery so things like ants shouldn't be able to get up and down here in the first place but if we have weevils or anything like that that do make their way up they'll go down and then what they need to do is they will need to walk across the diatomaceous earth to get to the trunk of the tree and up. And by the time they cross that much diatomaceous earth, it's pretty much a given they're not going to make it. So this is a really efficient way to keep a lot of pests off your trees. Put it around the base, seal it up, cover the inside with diatomaceous earth. And just remember, each time you water, you just need to reapply the diatomaceous earth. Because once it gets wet, it's no longer effective. 
So one aspect of citrus growing that is not often spoken about, especially on weakened and dehydrated trees, is fruit. If a tree has fruit, it is busy putting a lot of energy, nutrients and water into ripening these fruits. When, quite frankly, it should be putting all its energy into recovering, building up energy supplies so it can put out a whole new flush of fruit that it can actually support. So what we want to do is we want to come around and any of these fruits that are about that size, we want to come take them off. It's sad, it's hard, but it needs to be done. I can see one or two flowers on the tree. We'll leave those because by the time they either fall off or they get pollinated, the tree will, tree will have enough moisture and water to probably sustain it. But for now, we need to remove these ones especially because there's a high risk that these because of they have been neglected have been attacked by false codling moth i have got one that i found that i'm going to put in in frame for you now that you can actually see has been you can see that the eggs have been laid on the laid on the fruit there are two little burrowing holes where the larva have gone into the fruit and you've just started a whole new cycle on a fruit that is never going to mature so get rid of these your tree will thank you for it down the line you'll be getting way more than the couple of small ones you get from a weak tree and now last but not least we need to come in and remove the dead branches this is a dead one there's a big dead branch over here and we're gonna go down to the base and we're gonna look for all the dead branches remove those with loppers you don't want to be using hand pruners because the thorns on these are pretty damn aggressive but if you look at this all the way through this is a dead branch serving absolutely no purpose once we clear out all the dead debris the tree is immediately going to open up it'll have more airflow more light and it's generally going to be a lot healthier now the importance of pruning away dead branches cannot be emphasized enough. You need to keep a close eye on it because dead branches ultimately lead to more dead branches. The dieback could become uncontrollable if you do not prune them away. They could introduce disease, fungal issues that can get into the core of your stems and your branches, which as you can imagine, does not spell a good future for the tree. So get in there, remove all of the dead ones, and you, you will see an immediate benefit by opening it up in terms of light and airflow. So there you have it. What you need to do to bring a neglected, mature lemon tree or citrus tree back to health, to give it the right foot so that it can put on a huge amount of growth, flower, have beautiful scents and smell, bring in the bees and have a whole bunch of yummy citrusy goodness to feed you and your family there is going to be a, a sequel to this where we are going to look at feeding this plant what we don't want to be doing right now is we don't want to be fertilizing it because we can burn the roots and ultimately put it into more stress and more shock we don't want to be pruning it because obviously the tree needs to build up strength pruning it would make it weaker put it under stress put it back to where it is now so all of those are coming up in subsequent videos. We'll be coming back to this tree and hopefully by the end of it, we can show you a beautiful lush tree that is just absolutely filled with delicious fruit. If you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments about any of the advice I've given, please drop them in the comments below. I will get back to you. And please do subscribe to the channel to see what's gonna to happen to this tree and follow everything else that I do. And until next time, enjoy your garden and enjoy your citrus trees.